What's going on guys, this is Gene Jensen. In today's video, I wanna talk about how to fish a hollow body frog. All right, so this video is gonna, it goes along with my baits for September. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a little card right up here in the corner. You just click on it and go watch it. Um, it just talks about the different baits that I wanna fish, I'll be fishing in September. But uh, this specific one is my favorite this time of the year. I'm absolutely, I'm actually sitting on Lake Gunnersville right now. This is the Southeastern Mecca for frog fishing, but this isn't the only place you need to be fishing a frog. If you're up in Minnesota fishing around Leech Lake and any of those those lakes that have a whole lot of that, that, uh, that rice grass and that matted grass, throw a frog. If you're around any kind of cover, small ponds, I mean, anything this time of the year, except for a mud hole throw a topwater frog it's it's unreal so let's dive into the details and how i rig it up and what rods and reels and things like that that i, that I use before we get out on the water and i'll show you how to use it all right so the types of frogs that i use uh, let's go with the brands first. I love Spro Frogs. Been fishing them for many, many years. I've got videos that have hundreds of thousands of views of me fishing a Spro Frog. Love them. They're great. They need a little bit of modification. And what I'll do is I'll leave a link right up to the description of what I, or right up here, the little eye or whatever it's called. It's either here or here. I can't remember which one. Click on it. You can go watch the the video on how I how I modify frogs or Spro Frogs to um, to work a little bit better. Thirteen fishing trash pandas. This has one, become one of my favorites. I'm very partial to this one. I had a little bit of input into it on 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 the uh, on the design uh, there's not a whole lot you got to do right out of the package with this thing um, and it's great and then I never can remember the name of this one from Strike King but it's uh, these things I know they're ugly 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 I mean they're as homely as they get but these things work great in the crap that's behind me mats and 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 heavy vegetation I don't know why they're really really good don't pass these up because they're ugly that's the biggest thing so those are basically the three different types uh, there are three different brands and models that i use i'll use a booyah pad crash every once in a while but they don't last very long they're really really soft which helps with your hookup ratio but they're only good for just you know 10 15 to 10 to 15 fish and that's it let's talk about the rods and the reels and the line all right so first of all i use two different types of rods let me untangle the mess i've made but I use two different types of rods. I use, a, in these pads and mats behind me, I need the leverage to be able to get the bass out of these things. So what I do is I use a, a long, heavy power rod. So this one right here is an old 13 fishing frog rod. It's, the, it's actually the Fate Black. And what I'll do is down in the description, I will leave a link to all these things that I'm using, but with these rods and these reels, the ones that 13 don't make anymore, I'll leave a, a uh, a comparable one same price range same model everything else just not the green color all right so this one right here this is a seven foot five heavy power rod it's what you need to be able to muscle a big fish out of the mats and keep leverage on them and i absolutely this is you know this this length and this power is what i'm always looking for in a frog rod 65 pound braid i don't put anything else on this this is actually cigar smackdown um it is 65 pound braid it will rip through this grass really really good on a hook set and when the bass buries himself in the grass you have enough power to be able to get that fish out and to muscle him out of that grass eight one eight three to one gear ratio reel um and you got to have a high speed reel to be able to catch up with these fish a lot of times you got to have a high speed reel to be able to reel it in real fast get to the next cast and stuff like that just work more efficiently um and then a lot of drag you're going to crank your drag all the way down to as tight as you can get it and you're just gonna it's it's full combat fishing is what it is man i absolutely love it now when i'm fishing open water or more open water that's just like scattered vegetation uh pads a lot of times when i've got a lot of uh, a lot of open spots that i want to walk the frog in that's when i switch to a short heavy power rod uh like i said down in the description i'll link to the shortest rod 13 makes i'm sponsored by 13 so i'm gonna do that but go look for something less than seven feet long uh that is in heavy power a uh, fast action rod this right here is a six foot five that 13 used to make um it was my my idea they discontinued it after a couple of years because they they just do that and it's all right but it is my open water frog rod and the reason for a short rod is i do a lot of walking and it's so difficult to walk a little short frog with a long rod because you it's, it's just hard to move your hand and your wrist that little in order to get a good walk so the shorter the rod the easier to walk and i'll explain that more when i get out on the water the reel Again, eight, this is a eight, three to one gear ratio, concept A. Beefy, beefy uh, drag, and I crank it all the way down. 
and then um, the braid is a 65 pound braid. This is their, uh, uh, what they call it, the basics. This is part of their basics line braid. Um, it's called uh, Tactics Braid. I don't know why I always have a hard time remembering, but Tactics Braid, and it's inexpensive. It's only like 16, 17 dollars a spool, and it is really, really good. It's just loud coming out of the guides. It's taken a little bit of getting used to. It's been really, really good. And what I love about it is because it is a little rough and a little bit, uh, you know, uh, it, it's not that smooth braid. It doesn't dig into itself on the spool very much. So you get, you set the hook on a fish or you jerk it out of something and it doesn't dig into the spool. So your next cast isn't a backlash. So that's what I love about it. But that's the setups that I use for frog fishing. Not much else. Um, if you're looking for comparable rods, you know, somewhere in the mid seven and a half foot range for, a, for the, the, uh, the beef stick that you're going to fish this stuff with. And like I said, under seven feet for your short frog rod. All right. So modifications. I'm just going to talk a little bit about them. I'm going to leave a link up here to, to a, a video that I did about how I modify spro frogs and other types of frogs and, and just things that I look for. And it's a really good in-depth video. It talks about putting rattles in and all kinds of other stuff. So you're going to want to watch that. But modifications include bending hooks out, adding rattles, adding weight. When I'm fishing mats but like behind me, I like frogs that sink a little bit because I want them to push down on the mat as I'm working through it to, to give the bass a little bit more of an appealing target. That's when I use a heavier frog. Now there are some like the Spro Frog tournament, you have to have a frog that floats or you can't be fishing subsurface. So if it sits on top of the grass or the grass, you can fish it as long as you're not letting it sink down underneath there. But that's a whole different ball game. Now this one right here, this is the 13 fishing pad or uh, tra trash panda. What I do, what, what I love about it is when, you know, when we were talking about the design and stuff like that and 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 things like that we took into account the modifications that are done all the time with these frogs and so we don't have to bend the hooks out in this one they're already at that right that correct angle to be able to get a good positive hook set and not dig into the plastic um, you've got a vent hole in the top of it I don't know if you guys can see it on this white one, but you get, there's a vent hole in the top, so when the bass bites, it spits out the water. For years, what I did to the hook is I would take that hook and I would wrap braid around both of those hooks. And what that does, is it prevents that hook from torquing out when your big fish hooks gets hooked by just one of those hooks. What happens is they can torque it out and literally get off. So I would wrap braid around it to keep that from happening, and it would also plug the hole. Well, 13's put some shrink wrap there instead, and it does both. It plugs the hole and it keeps it from flexing out. Absolutely genius. And now if you notice on this one, there's no, uh, there's no weight to, at the end of it. You know, like this one right here has got a weight on the back of it. Um, the weight is actually on the hook and it really does change the action a little bit. Some people like it, some people don't. So it's one of those things you're just going to have to try out if you're used to uh, certain frogs, but it really makes it to where it walks better. It makes it to where, um, it covers, you know, covers through, goes through the, the cover a little bit better. It's just a little bit different. The, the pointed one's a little bit different going through mats like this. Oh, knots. The, when you're fishing with braided line, the only knot that I tie to a frog is a Palomar knot. It's the only knot that I've never had fail on braid. Most, or a lot of other knots will pull out, especially with that slick braid, will pull out eventually and work their way loose and you lose your frog and you lose your fish. All right, so let's get out on the water, go through these mats. Let me talk a little bit about how to walk a frog and, uh, and the kind of places and situations that I'll fish it. And, uh, and we'll go from there. All right, so while I'm working my way back to my spot, I wanna share with you guys my frog playlist. Um, I, I keep these playlists for, basically make it easy for people to, to, to get as much information as they possibly can. Just click on the link and go and watch the playlist uh, of all the frog videos I've done over the years. Shoot, I've got 800 videos to, dr to draw from, so. There's a lot of information in those things, and I'm sure I've forgotten more than I more than I can can think of. So, anyway, watch them. Let's get over here and catch some fish. All right. So this is the kind of area we dream about when we are fishing a hollow body frog. Pads, matted vegetation, thick cover, bass up underneath them feeding on anything and everything that comes by. It's not always the case, but you always when you pull up to a mat like this or pull up into an area like this, you always listen. Use your ears, listen for pops. You're listening for what sounds like like, like Rice Krispies uh, on steroids. <laughs> it's just, you hear a whole lot of bluegill popping and stuff like that. The more you hear, the more, you know, the more life is under these mats and the more life attracts bass and the bass come over to feed on whatever is under the mats. So that's kind of the trick. I'm always gonna fish a pointed style of frog. The reason is, is because like I said earlier, the lip of a popping frog gets caught up in everything, especially pads. And so 
the big thing of this, it's really simple, easy. Pull out your big meat stick and throw that frog up on top of those pads or into the mats and that kind of stuff. And you're just gonna work it real slowly over top of it. You're not trying to walk it. You're not trying to have a rhythm. You're not trying to do anything. You just throw it out there. You know, try to aim for some holes if there's some holes in there and that kind of stuff. And I'm just gonna slowly work it across the pads. And as I get to the edge of a pad, I'm just gonna stop. And I'm gonna let it sit there for a second. And I'm gonna keep on going. Pads with a whole lot of matted vegetation like this is not my favorite. What I like to do is find some that have some open holes in it. Like there's a little open hole right there and a little one right there. But there's not a whole lot of them right here. But I'm aiming for those open holes. I don't know if you guys can see the one, but it's one way out there. And I got to loosen up this reel to make you to be able to cast it. <laughs> you try to get it over to the hole and you drag it through the hole. Now, when you're dragging through this kind of stuff, this happens a lot. Oops, it came off. Tried to show you, but the hooks will get catch on the stuff. You just have to, you have to deal with it. Just one of those things. All right, so matted vegetation. Look at all this. I mean, it is so much to cover. And once again, you use your ears. You listen for pops. I don't hear any right here. If uh, I wouldn't stop and fish it, but I'm just going to kind of show you guys how I'm going to work it through the mats. Then I'll go out to the open to the mouth of this pocket and find an area that has a lot of uh, a lot of life. But anyway, so I'm using I'm working this mat now. I'm going to use a frog that has a little bit of weight to it. I'm gonna add weight if it needs it, so on and so forth. But the goal is to get press a little bit down on these mats as you're working it through, especially if there's bass there, just gives them a better target. So I'm gonna cast it out. I'm not popping, I'm not doing this number, and I'm not working it super fast. I wanna, I just drag it a little bit. A drag and stop is all I do. And you see, well, look at my rod, look at what I'm doing. I'm just dragging and stopping. And I may speed this up or slow this down or whatever else, but if I've got no holes to work in and I just want them to come up through those mats, I'm just gonna drag just like this. That's it, that's it for the mats. Now, when you get bit, whether no matter what, but when you get bit, one of the hardest things to do is to wait. You want to you see that big explosion come up out of those mats and you want to set the hook right away. So the, one of the tricks and the techniques that I use is I fish with my rod out of position to make a hook set. So I'm going to throw it out and look at where my rod is. My rod is down and low and I'm working it through and I'm working it through and I get bit. And the first thing I do is I bow to the fish and then I have to set the hook over my head. OK, and so when I get bit, it's like whoop. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, and then I set the hook. And just having my rod out of position to set a hook right, hook right of way, right of way, reminds my brain to stop for a second and then set the hook. A lot of people say, "Wait till you feel the fish." Yes, if you're doing what I'm doing and you're still not getting a good hook set, then wait till you feel the fish and then hammer it home. But when you hammer it home, you better hammer it. You've got to turn and you got to imagine you've got a six, seven, eight pound bass on the end of your line. Up north, you might have a four pound. But anyway, you got a big bass on the end of the line. You've got to turn the head of that bass on the hook set. You've got to get him coming towards you before he wraps you up all in that grass. And then you got to go get him. So you set the hook and then you pull hard and you just fight him like there's no tomorrow and that is what i love about fishing a frog in matted vegetation this is an area that i love to fish on gunnersville um it's got a lot of scattered submerged grass there's not a whole lot um reaching the surface you know you got mats over here but over here it's really really scattered and you see a lot of of fish ticking a lot of bait fish in the area it's kind of the areas i'm looking for this technique or this way of fishing you can do around boat docks like i said you can do around wood you can do just you can do anywhere else but there and so i just want to kind of show you guys one how to walk a frog and kind of the area that i look for especially in these grassy lakes when they're not up underneath the mats and so you see here, we got nice, good scattered vegetation. A lot of this is just subsurface. There's still a lot of grass here that you can't see, but you can get a bass to come out and hit a frog. And I do this by walking a frog. When walking a frog, this is a this is a very important technique because it does get a lot of trick. It gets to, the bass to trigger really, really easy when they're feeding up. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna cast out. I'm gonna try to keep this as. I'm not gonna make a big long cast. When you're walking like a spook or a longer bait, you 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 have a lot more motion and a lot more, you know, you gotta move your the tip of your rod a lot more 
to get the frog to get get the bait to walk, walk. But with a frog, because they're so short, the movement on the end of your rod is so is is a lot less than that, and which makes it really really difficult with a long rod. So that's why I recommend a short rod to walk a frog. Now this is a slack line technique. You're basically tapping a drum. You go tap 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 tap. You get that frog working. But you've got to tap the drum. When I say that, think about hitting your pencil on the desk or just tapping something with a pencil. You don't hit it and leave your pencil on the desk or hit the drum with the drumstick and leave the drumstick on the drum. You tap it and bring it back. And that's basically what you're doing. You're, you're tapping the drum and you're throwing your line back at the bait to give it slack so it can turn and walk. And that's what I mean by walking. It's a zigzag motion. And it is so difficult with a frog at first. But when you get it down, when you find that, that sweet spot, you can make your frog, and it's hard on a short line. I'm gonna try to get close to the camera. You can make your, make your frog do that. And that zigzag is so hard on a short line because you don't have a lot, little enough line to throw back at them. But get that frog to zigzag in that open water or in those holes that you throw in through and stuff like that. And you can do this with the pointed frog as well. You get them to do that and the bass will annihilate it. So what I'm doing in this area, because I do have a lot of scattered vegetation, um, I'm looking for maybe a little bit that's barely touching the surface or I'm trying to see what's in the surface requires pretty good polarization and that kind of stuff. Good polarized sunglasses. But... I'm just covering water, it's basically I am. And once you get bit in this type of area, there's gonna be a concentration of fish. So I put the trolling motor on low, I'm working my way around, I'm, I'm walking that frog all around these mats, all the little small mats and stuff, I'm working the edges of them, I'm working the open water, and I'm just covering as much water as I can, and, and really not really stopping much, okay? Now with the cadence of this frog, I might go pop, pop, pause, pop, 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 pause, I may do that like I do with a spook, you know, just kind of play around with the cadence, to play around with the number of pops and how long I let it sit, and uh, I got... I got beat in a Spro Frog kayak tournament a couple of years ago. Um, I did get big fish for the tournament. I, I think I came in second or third. I can't remember what I, what place I came in. But the guy that won it taught me something. He was dead sticking his frog, so he would throw it along the edge of the grass, let it stop, let it sit, let the let the the, the ripples get away from the frog, and he'd just go pop pop and pause it. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand. Then he. would Walk it a few more times, same thing, one, one thousand, two, and it would trigger those bites. The bass weren't quite on that that classic, you know, moving frog bite. They wanted it paused. So if you paused it three, four, five seconds and then jerked it a couple more times, they would annihilate it. And I learned a lot from just listening to him tell his story. That's always an option, especially early in September and that kind of time, time frame where they're not quite on the frog, but you want to catch them on a frog. Try dead sticking it. Try stopping it for a long period of time and then twitch, twitch, and then watch what happens. A frog is pretty much a an all-terrain vehicle uh, for bass fishing, and you can throw it into just about anything. You can have a whole lot of fun, but you can ruin a, a day with the wrong equipment. So make sure you've got your heavy rods, your heavy braid, and go out there and have some fun. But that's the basics of frog fishing. Now, the following, the, in October, I'm kind of putting these, well, this, this September, I'm kind of putting these out really, really quick. So they're short and sweet and, and to the point i want to eventually in october november now that, now that I've, I've got the time to produce those videos really dig into deep and get a lot more good quality going and stuff like that so bear with me for these for these few videos that are coming out in september you will learn something from them they're just not my best work um but like i always say be sure to introduce somebody to fishing introduce them to my channel let me help you teach them how to fish more importantly get out on the water go ahead and catch some fish and have a great day we'll see you